Are you ready? So you've received a ton of stuff that you didn't ask for and you're going back online to return everything, go down to the store to return more stuff and you don't know what you're going to do with all your money. That's always a problem that you have, right? Well today I have an answer for you. We're going to do a drawing with the new White Knights. This is the Granulation and Earth set. I took it out of the box. It actually comes in a little box like this. This is the set. We just did the swatch in the last video. Don't pretend like you don't remember. So today I'm going to use them in a drawing and put something together and see how that works. And then I've got some other ideas. I want to maybe put backgrounds in with some of these granulating paints where the color separates and get this nice beautiful color in there. And then do drawings on top of them. That's another idea I have. I don't know what I'm going to do in this video because I haven't done it yet. So we're going to find out together. All right, let's get into it. All right, before I get started, I just want to say stay tuned till the end because two people have sent in some artwork. So we're going to look at that. Thank you very much for sending those in. And we're going to take a look at it. Okay, so I do want to start out by saying I love these paints. Now, when I started using them, I thought, okay, they're just, you know, they're nice granulating paints, whatever. Then I started using them wet and wet and they were just explosive. So I did this whole painting wet into wet. I laid down some water in a shape. Then I put the paint in that shape and just kind of added the color to it. And let's see what happened and it bloomed and all these other things happened and there was separation and different colors came out and it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. So. If you're going to use these paints, this may be the way to do it. Now, immediately, I went and ordered the other set of these paints. It's the darker set. And I'm going to have those, and we're going to do another swatch with them soon. So, don't worry about that. But we're going to do it, and I'm going to do this same way. So, instead, I'm going to take that swatch card, and I'm going to make two boxes for every color. One will just be straight, normal, how I swatch it out. And the second way will be a wet on wet, maybe with some extra water blooms in it to see if we can separate the colors. Because these are absolutely beautiful and the way that they granulate and the way that they move is, I've never seen a whole set of paints do this. I've seen one or two. I have some Primatex that do it. I showed you that in the last video, I think I did. And, and the, the Jadeite Genuine does it and the Pimentite Genuine, that does it also. And, and that those they look beautiful but not all of the granulating paints separate like that but for most of these they do most of these separate and they they come in the granulation they separate into different colors which is just amazing it's beautiful it's wonderful some of them didn't here but a good portion of them did i've never seen a whole set of paints do it like that so as i'm going through i did do one or two colors where i tried to blend one color into the other color and that didn't work out so well because i didn't use the right colors it's my fault it's all on me whenever anything doesn't work out the right way here it's on me don't worry about that it's all on me so this set they called the earth set and they there was a lot of different earth colors in here but there was a lot of different like i wouldn't consider the purple that separates into a red and blue, I wouldn't necessarily call that an earth tone. Maybe some of the reds were earthy and the blue, maybe you could say, okay, maybe that's some water or something like that. But really, it didn't really, they're not all earth tones. They just had to put together a set. The next set is, I think it's called the, just the granulation set. I don't think there's anything weird with it, but it's the dark set. And it's the one that most people on YouTube will go ahead and have but it's supposed to be a lot of dark blues and purples and that kind of stuff i don't think there's any real earth tones in that one i don't think there's any reds or so so what i'm going to do is take the two sets put them together i'm going to make a single set from them and just put together some paints that i like i'll probably put them in a tin or something like that with a little magnet on the bottom of the pan so that they stick down so i can get a few more colors i, I like a little bit more than 12 colors so I may try and do that. I may just put a couple more in there. But if I can narrow it down to 12, I'll stick them all in one. And I'll just do it that way. These are amazing paints. They work great. And then I go back in with pen and I ruin the whole thing. Well, not I don't actually ruin it. But really, 
I think by itself, it had, the colors popped off the page, so I think it was okay. But I went back in anyway, I added a little bit more contrast, I added some line work, and it turned out fine. It wasn't a big deal. So this leads me to a very interesting question. Does buying the right art supplies make you a better artist? And I say yes. And we've all seen those artists that just let me just hear me out before you jump all over that one. So we've seen those artists that they're like artistic masters. They can draw with a number two pencil. They can create stunning artwork with a regular school pencil. Everything looks beautiful. Their skill is amazing. We all know this. We see it. It's amazing. I'm not trying to deny that, but what if that same artist they up their contrast a little bit. They use a full range of graphite pencils. The same artist would create better art. Now, I'm not saying better as in the shapes would be more accurate or it's more appealing. No, I am saying it's more appealing. It's more appealing to the eye because the contrast is there. You'd have a full range of shadows and highlights, and that's really what draws the eye is that, that contrast. So if you don't have it, everything looks the same color and the same value. It just looks washed out. It's just washed out across the whole thing. Now, what about someone who takes Crayola colored pencils and they create a nice drawing with those? They could, they absolutely could. You take Crayola pencils, there's artists all over YouTube that say, can I create with Crayola pencils? And they do. They create some nice art with Crayola pencils. But you give that artist some professional grade materials like Polychromos or the Derwent Drawing Pencils, those are my favorite, or the Luminance Pencils, at which I've never bought. I, I couldn't have, I didn't mortgage another house to buy those. But they some people do. And they blend so much better because there's more saturation you can get some odorless mineral spirits or you can get to any other blending medium. If you use a stump if you want to. And you can blend those pencils together. If you use the, the spirits, it'll melt together and it'll make the piece look like a painting almost. Now, I'm just saying it's possible for them to create better art with better supplies. Listen, when I started, I was using watercolor and I bought Bristol plate paper. Do you know what that stuff is? That stuff is slicker than a sheet of ice. It falls apart with water. It's terrible. You're not supposed to do that. I had no idea what I was doing. Then I saw someone say, oh, you need to use watercolor paper. And I thought, oh, there's an idea. The watercolor paper for the watercolor. I didn't know they did that. So I bought a sketchbook, a watercolor sketchbook. Now, back around 2015 or so, there weren't many 100% cotton watercolor sketchbooks. And that's about the time I started buying my first sketchbooks. So I don't know if I uh, knew any at that time. I don't even know if there was anything in existence. I'm sure there was. I just, I didn't know about them. So now it's easy to find them. Everyone has a 100% cotton watercolor sketchbook. Everybody does that now. But I was using a pulp paper sketchbook. And they're fine to do some line of wash or simple painting, a little bit of color added to it. But, but layers and layers and layers, then they fall apart. You can't do that. So plus you get blooms easier. It seems like it's easier to have the painting not sit right on the paper and it forms weird edges and textures sometimes not in a good way in a weird way it just depends on what you're used to using but then i bought a hundred percent cotton watercolor sketchbook and i never looked back now i'm not saying i don't use pulp paper i still use that but i know what to use it for i don't try and put layers after layer on it and have the thing fall apart on me so i use when i go to do my layered watercolor I use 100% cotton paper. Matter of fact, most of the time, I use 100% cotton watercolor paper. I have a much better time of it. It makes me a better artist. Now, what if I use those products, which were very frustrating to use, and sometimes they made me feel uninspired? Now, I could get so frustrated that I just quit and I give up. So, yes, the correct art materials can make you a better artist because when you use the correct art materials, what you're trying to accomplish is very important. You have to pick the right thing for the job. So if you aren't getting the results and you want it to look a certain way and you just end up beating yourself up saying, oh man, I, I just, I can't do this. This is not right. I'm just a terrible artist. But, but if you do get the right material, you get inspired, you start being more creative. You're like, oh, that came out right this time. It gets you excited. It adds a little bit more excitement into your art and into your creativity. So that's where it does. Now, listen, I am all for using 
the cheapest stuff that you can use for what you want to do. I have no problem with that. I don't think you should go spend more money than you have to on getting better art supplies. It doesn't mean, just because something's more expensive does not mean that it's better. I use very cheap watercolor paper sometimes. It's still 100% cotton, but it's a lot less expensive than the best stuff out there. I'm just saying I use, I use the stuff for the job that I'm doing, and it makes me excited when I get the results I want. It helps me move forward. I want to create the next piece. I want to go do something else. I want to move forward and, and improve what I'm doing. So... And I promise you, most of my art supplies are not very expensive. They're not the highest end, in other words. They're more expensive than some of the garbage stuff, but it's not, definitely not the most expensive stuff out there. And once in a while, I enjoy struggling a little bit. But that's only if I'm trying to do something to myself. That's, I do that for me. So I, I don't have the exact best because I just want to struggle a little bit. It's fun, but sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes you get very dis distracted, discouraged, you want to stop, you want to put everything down, and I don't recommend that. You have to make sure what you're doing will help you. You use something, that way you're not having to think about the thing you're using, and you can just think about the piece you're creating. And you don't have to worry about, oh, is this paper going to fall apart now because I put too much water on it, or, oh, did I put too many layers of colored pencil on something, and now it's not going to take any more layers, or I can't use the odorless mineral spirits, it'll destroy the paper, it'll do this, do that. Listen, you can use the right stuff, use the right pencils, the right watercolor, the right paper, whatever you're doing, and you'll have a much better time of it. Does that make sense? I want to hear your thoughts on it. Do you think that art supplies make you a better artist? I believe that they do. When, they, when you don't have to focus on them and you can just create, but not everybody believes that. Some people think, no, it has nothing to do with it. You should be able to create a masterpiece with a number two pencil and that's it. Just that should be everything. But I don't feel that way. I will want to make sure that I'm doing something that I want to do and not something that I'm forcing myself to do and becoming frustrated with it. But that's just me. Maybe you're different than me. And that's why this subject is perfect for this video. Because I took these paints, and they're not the most expensive paints in the world. That, this set was not that bad for 12 different full pans of paint. If you go to like a brand like Schmenko, people love that. It's like the top of the line. You get a 12 color set and see how much money you pay for it. Or even Winsor & Newton, some of their stuff is a little bit expensive. They're, these are top quality paints. I get it. But, and these are too. These are, don't play second fiddle to anyone. These are some great paints. So when I use them, and they're a little bit less expensive, but I used them and they were inspiring. I looked at all the color popping everywhere and all the separation and it was exactly what I needed to inspire some different kind of painting or just get me wanting to create more and it got me to buy the other set because I wanted to do that. Don't spend all your money on this stuff unless you're buying it through my affiliate links, that's for sure. But it just inspired me and I want it to inspire you too. I'm not saying that you always have to get new art supplies to be inspired but just make sure that what you're using is good and it, it is inspiring and it's the right thing for you to be trying the different techniques that you're trying to do oh my goodness i couldn't believe how long i would use like i i enjoy the stillman and burn books i do i know i might have complained about them in the past but i use them quite a bit I still have a Zeta series, it's a larger one. I still use that thing. And my gray book, I love that. I use that all the time. I love the gray book from them. But I don't, not hear it very often because it's a big thing to stick on the desk. But anyway, I may do some bigger stuff here soon. I don't know exactly when, but I may do some bigger stuff here. But anyway, I still use that book and I enjoyed their books when I had them. The smaller ones I used to use all the time and they were good but when I wanted to do a regular watercolor painting and layer some stuff they fall apart. It's just not the right thing for that job. It doesn't mean the book is bad. I love doing pen and ink in there. I like doing the little line and wash stuff. The, the simple color. One swipe of color and you're done. I like doing that stuff in there. But other than that, you'd have to treat the page. A lot of people put gesso on the page, and then they do whatever they want with it. That's di I'm not talking about that. That's different. But you make sure you use the right thing for the right job. And at least those people that do that 
understand, hey, this book isn't going to handle this huge acrylic painting I want to put in here. So I need to put some gesso and treat the page. At least they're doing the right thing with it. So that's all I'm saying. Do whatever makes you the least frustrated and the most where you can just concentrate on what you're doing. Okay, so for both of these artists, you can see their work up on the website. That You'll see the address later on. But down below, you'll also see it. Go to illustrationsbypete.com. They have their own pages for their own art. Let's start out with Carmen here first. On the left, this one had an interesting story. Both of these had stories, but this one had an interesting story. It was about a uh, magic scarf, and that was very interesting. This other one here on the right, that was also, that was a very interesting story about a bull, and it's like an abstract bull drawing. It's very interesting. I do enjoy all the detail in that second one there on the right. I enjoy both of these, but... The one on the right is a little bit more where I'm trying to figure out what's happening in it and it just draws my attention a little bit more because of all the different details in there and I'm trying to wrap my head around it. And what I did with these is she told me the story in the email but what I did was before I look at the story I want to look at the piece and I want to see if the piece is interesting. Once I know the piece is interesting then add the story. I go on a ton times before where I say Hey, look, I don't want to hear the story. Don't read me a book. Let me look at the piece and see if it's interesting. But once I see that it's interesting, then you can tell me the story. And it just adds to how interesting that piece has become. But if it's not interesting to look at, the story doesn't matter. So it has to be interesting first, the art itself, and then you can go ahead with the story. And I just really enjoy this piece. Okay, now this piece is from Denise. Now... Let me let you know this because I've already said multiple times I love when someone takes something that's realistic and then they also make an abstract out of it. Well, what she did is she did a realistic horse painting or drawing underneath and then added the abstract on top. And I absolutely love it. I love the technique and how it came out. It is very interesting. There's a lot of contrast in there. You see that it's some kind of horse. You already know that. But all the abstract stuff and detail on top kind of draws you in. You're trying to look at all the details and see what all the little things are. And to me, this kind of looks like a zombie horse with the white eye there. It looks like maybe it's Night of the Living Dead horse. And, you know, and, and the green on the outside kind of helps with that. Because usually when you look at those things, they, I don't know, for some reason, everybody puts the zombie stuff with green around them. So it just adds to it. But I absolutely love this piece. Thank you so much, Denise. And thank you both of you for contributing here and letting us all see what you're doing. It's all, that's what it's a part of, creating that bond and, and getting in touch with everybody and saying, look, this is what we're doing. Let's see what you're doing. So if you are doing some art and you would like to put it up on the channel, put it up on the website, please send it in to me so that I can add to whatever is already on the site and we maybe we could talk about it or at least you could start a conversation with someone else and see what they think. I am embarrassed to show you my art after showing you theirs, but I'm going to show it anyway. So thumb up the video if you are going to try and figure out if you're what you're using, how you're using it, and make sure you're using the right thing that inspires you and keeps you going. I don't even care if you're using the wrong thing. Just use something that inspires you to keep going and keep moving forward that you get excited about trying and using and doing. That's what it's all about, being excited, having fun, because if you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. All right. If you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in, you can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.